I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Nicholas Pelicanus, the head of trading at NEM. Nicholas, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, I guess, virtually. Yeah. Well, it's great to connect. I'd love to start the interview by hearing a little bit on your background and how that led to your role at NEM. Okay. So I got into crypto fairly early on, uh, which I was fortunate to do. Um, I started a trading club in my university. And essentially, I modeled that off one of the funds in my city. And we had like a currencies team, a commodities team, an index team. And we split up all the kids and we were all just like going through all of these verticals looking for opportunities. And then uh, one day, one of our guys was like, you know, maybe we should check out, maybe we should check out cryptos. And we had dabbled in Bitcoin a bit, um, but we never really sort of sunk our teeth into it. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we got into crypto, um, started like mining ETH. And uh, this is when it was like below a dollar. Hmm. And, um, you know, 2017 came around and, you know, we still had the club going. And, I mean, when that happened, we were like one of the only bodies in, in my town, well, in, in the city, who really knew anything about it. Mm-hmm. So we had all these people coming to our lectures we were hosting. And um, out of that, I started a consultancy. Uh, I was advising on primary and secondary market transactions. Uh, NEM Ventures happened to be uh, one of my clients. Um, and, you know, I was talking to those guys a lot. They were telling me they were doing these, uh, like they were, they were going through this sort of reorg process. And, you know, I've always been sort of, you know, I think everyone was waiting for Catapult and um, mm-hmm. now it's called Symbol. But I was like somewhat in the loop of, ha- of how that was developing. Um, but I mean, so, so yeah, when, when, like the reorg started to happen. Um, the ventures team asked me to come across to be head of trading. But I mean, more so the reason why I accepted is, you know, I think about markets through, I mean, particularly tech markets through the lens of like two primary sort of values. Mm-hmm. Uh, one being the sort of underlying utility value of of the technology, whatever it may be. And then the second, Second being sort of the speculative interest that sort of ebbs and flows through that. So, I mean, if you if you imagine sort of, um, I mean, development on, on if you if you sort of charted that, it, it sort of would, would look more or less constant on a large time frame, right? Mm-hmm. And it could be up and down depending on sort of breakthroughs in technology lead to more development, releases like new regulation, like we we sort of heard yesterday from those. Who, CC about banking, like, you know, Mm -hmm. these sort of things create an environment where you can develop more within the space. So I think about it through this lens and uh, I was watching them and, you know, there's this reorg going on and they're bringing in some really incredibly talented and experienced people. I mean, not like to say that they weren't there already, but I Mm -hmm. mean, uh, they're, they're coming in. And then, you know, we had this development going on in terms of, you know, like the symbol launch is just around the corner. Yeah, and so in my mind, I was thinking about this and going, okay, like, like you look at the trading volumes. I mean, the trading volumes are picking up now, but the trading volumes on NEM as an asset had been mm-hmm. very quiet. And so, just in that framework of, of my own thinking, I was like, wow, the upside, the upside on this is enormous because, like, compared to sort of like the more pop- popular like. Um, protocols like you know ETH or mm-hmm. I mean Cardano's been making a lot of noise. Um, NEM's been quite quiet. You know, it's like a sleeping giant. It's been around from yeah. from, from it's like started in 2015. Uh, it's never been hacked, and you know there's all this development going on. So I think sort of the upside on it is is what really drew me over. I think that was quite exciting. So definitely, that's nice. how I've ended up here. That's that's great, and you touched on the the symbol platform, you know, for enterprise adoption of blockchains. That's going to be big, and I want to jump into that. Uh, but before we do that, I want to just get a high level overview, you know, for the people that have just they've heard of NEM and it's a blockchain, but they don't really know anything else about you know the goals of the ecosystem or how it's different and unique. If you could just touch on like a high level, then we'll jump into some of the updates that NEM is having after okay. that. All right. Well, I mean. A sort of good analog is probably Ethereum, right? You know, every, everyone sort of 
conceptually understands what Ethereum does at a high level. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we could probably start there. And then what, what where I think NEM's different is, you know, Ethereum is great for these decentralized applications because, you know, you, 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 you build the smart contract and then that's it. You know, you just let it run. With NEM, you have a bit more flexibility with that. Um, so, I mean, and, and with the whole thing with Symbol is, you know, it's going to be like this hybrid chain. Um, you know, I kind of think about ETH would be sort of where you would build a fully decentralized application. But NEM is is sort of that bridge between real world business and mm-hmm. then blockchain. Uh, so I think that that's like our, our gap. That's our niche, if, if that makes sense to people. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, well, I do know that NEM provides a lot of, on the developer side, you know, SDKs and toolkits to help people build. You provide a lot more support, mm-hmm. and especially with the Symbol platform that's now launching in the enterprise adoption. Maybe we could just jump into that. You know, how specifically are you helping enterprises secure their digital assets and integrate blockchain tech through the Symbol platform that's now launching? Okay, all right. So, I mean, first off, you know, I, I I'm come from a finance background and, you know, like to, to draw this back to Ethereum, you know, you, you mm-hmm. can build these amazing DeFi applications, but when it comes to regulating them, it's hard, um, you know, traditional business needs to have something offline, you know, and mm-hmm. I think the fact that Symbol can provide this, this, this hybrid solution means that we can build sort of, um, I mean, DeFi applications that will be that will fit into a regulated structure. So there's basically more room in my mind for us to sort of, again, like a, just drawing it back to what I said earlier, is like we can sort of bridge that gap. Um, you know, there's a lot of pain points with um, securitizing assets, like, you know, transaction speeds and the cost of transactions. Both of those on the Symbol platform will, I mean, we will, we're far, it'll be fast, obviously it's hybrid mm-hmm. and it'll be quite cheap. Um, and, you know, we're seeing that now we're having a lot of sort of um, organizations that help secure um, assets on blockchains, like looking to get involved with um, Symbol. Uh, so, I mean, that's it from sort of how the, the business point of view mm-hmm. in terms of the technology, you know, like the, the NIS one blockchain's never been hacked since 2015. Um, you know, it's, it was the first to bring in multi-sig and it's, I think it's, you know, I'm not a tech guy by any stretch of the imagination, but it's, it's building on top of the multi-sig. Um, there's going to be aggregate transactions. Um, and I think sort of there's a, there's a tiered multi-sig approach, which would sort of allow organizations to have that same sort of control, hierarchical control, mm-hmm. um, through the organization, but all on blockchain, uh, which I think sort of an innovation that is, I mean, will, will be really appealing to organizations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely appealing. And, you know, it's one thing to tokenize financial assets, but I know NEM is really going out there and showing different use cases, you know, from everything from, from watches and jewelry to other unique items. And, you know, one of the recent partnerships that I read about with NEM and Wave Financial is tokenizing $20 million worth of bourbon whiskey. Um, so yeah, I wanted to touch yeah, on that because it's yeah. super interesting. You know, can you talk about you know what does it yeah, what does can, it do to yeah. tokenize whiskey and where is the whiskey? You know, can we get some? Okay. Well, yeah. Well, first off, I'll say I'll just preface this by saying that this is all the hard work of of Dave. He's our mm-hmm. our uh, he runs the NEM Ventures and he's the head or chief investment officer. He's a very switched on and smart man. Um, and he sort of um, has been sort of spearheading this whole uh, well, some of the tokenization on the uh, symbol blockchain, on them blockchain. Uh, so I can speak to it. I'm not the guy who's been running it. Uh, yeah. But basically, you know, if you want to invest in whiskey, as uh, I, you, you generally have to buy barrels mm-hmm. or you have to buy the whole production line. And then you, you hold that barrel for X amount of years and then you bottle it and you sell it and that's when, when you make your upside, right? Mm-hmm. So what we're doing with Wave is basically, you know, it's, it's, it's the standard tokenization play. We're taking that and we're breaking, we're fractionalizing it and putting it on the blockchain so that, you know, people can get exposure to the whiskey market. And the whiskey market is actually quite lucrative. 
Um, and I think this is the first sort of exposure that of this kind that anyone's going to be able to make into whiskey. Uh, I think it's it's open to Reg A and Reg D investors in the US. Um, you know, you, you can check out Wave Financial. Um, it'll be on their website, how to, how to get an exposure. I mean, there's a lot more of this stuff sort of coming out of um, NEM and Symbol, I mean, as we progress. Mm -hmm. So uh, whis whiskey today, which is delicious, and then maybe we can get onto something else. I don't know, like... Gin, I don't know. <laughs> <We'll see. laughs> That's great. And yeah, it's really cool all these enterprises, you know, with their products tokenizing them. But part of the bigger picture and mo moving forward to mainstream adoption is, you know, central banks, financial institutions, and governments adopting potentially this technology as well. And I know that NEM has been working with a central bank, you know, the Central Bank of Lithuania, uh, which are, seem to be very progressive. And uh, I was reading into this collectible crypto coin, uh, and you, you partnered with SuperHow to tokenize this coin. Can you talk about working with the central bank, and you know, is this a step forward in the right direction? Yeah, yeah. So, I guess this was this sort of um, responds directly to what I was saying earlier about like organizations, real organizations, and business will are starting to and will continue to view NEM and Symbol as sort of the the go-to blockchain because of how we can bridge that gap between decentralized and, and real-world business. Um, and I think like nothing paints that picture more clearly than a central bank wanting to issue currency on a, on the blockchain, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what they're doing at the moment is issuing uh, six, six tokens um on on our exchange oh sorry on on our blockchain uh and you can you can buy those tokens on an exchange uh and then when you when you get six of these tokens then you get sort of the lb coin um mm. there's only going to be four thousand of them the the value is 19 euros and 18 cents uh which is <laughs> I, I don't know how they came to that but um yeah i mean look the fact that that this is central bank issuing currency on a blockchain is sort of what everyone's been waiting for since when, when Bitcoin white paper was first written, right? Like mm -hmm. this is, this is, this is actually happening, right? We have governments using blockchain to issue currency and they're using them to do that. So I think it's, I think it's extremely exciting. Yeah, that's very exciting. And that leads me to the next step in that evolution, which is, you know, what are your thoughts on central bank digital currencies, uh, whether it's the US dollar, Chinese yuan, or you know, the British pound where you are? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I can see it coming. Eventually, it'll be there. Um, I think China is doing something like, like this at the moment, right? Um, the US and the UK, I can see that being, I can see that lagging behind a fair bit, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, you look at the way the world's turning at the moment, um, you know, you have this mass unemployment and, and I mean, prior to all of that, people were talking about, um, a universal basic income. And I mean, if you think about it, what's the best way to, to issue that? How do you manage that system? Mm -hmm. it's, it's probably, it's probably with blockchain. blockchain. So I can see something like that probably emerging in this post COVID world. Mm -hmm. Um, at, at what pace? I mean... Look, I, I'm Australian. Um, my Well, the Australian government has been sort of cracking down on cash for a long time. I can see an economy like that. I can see like someone like Australia adopting it perhaps sooner than, than the US and the UK. Like I think, you know, just the way that those economies are set up, you know, I, I can see that they, they would be sort of lagging right behind. But... I can I can see there will be a transition period, you know, where there will be some currency, i.e., like a universal basic income, issued on some sort of blockchain. Um, you know, if anyone wants to talk, you know, Symbol's going to be pretty good for that. So yeah, uh, yeah, great, Nick. Well, we're running out of time, but uh, I'm curious, what are NEM's goals for outreach right now? Are you looking for more enterprises to partner with or more central banks potentially or just more community members? And how can they find out more about NEM? Look, I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're uh, like a decentralized, a decentralized 
protocol, right? You know, everyone can get involved at any time. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so community, if you want to get involved, we've got, um, you know, Telegram channels. Um, we've got NemHub, which just launched. I think, like, check out NemHub. Like, any, anyone involved in crypto should check out NemHub right now. You know, it's a good way to earn NEM. You can learn a lot about sort of symbol and, and the snapshot that's going to take place. Uh, and it's a really good way to get involved with our community now. Uh, in terms of enterprise, like, we are starting to get <clears throat> a lot of interest around symbol from sort of existing businesses, you know, um, and, and governments. Uh, so, I mean, more the merrier. You, it's, mm-hmm. it, Google us if you're interested, I guess. You know, we've got the Symbol website, the NEM website. Um, and then just blockchain applications, you know, the, I, I don't know how much, how much like people have read into what Symbol can do, but it's actually quite phenomenal. And mm-hmm. I think we're going to be sort of the first blockchain that has nailed atomic swaps. So, you know... And then, and then also, like I said, we have this hybrid functionality. So in my mind, I can see sort of like real businesses tapping into DeFi via um, Symbol. Um, and I can see that being sort of a, a space of great growth. Um, so, I mean, yeah, like blockchain applications, you know, check out. Like if you're thinking about building a blockchain application, I would take the time to read about what Symbol can do. Because, I mean, if you, if you can run an atomic swap quite easily it really opens you up to the whole universe of of applications out there within crypto at the moment so i mean you could really build something quite exciting definitely well thank you i'll leave those links in the description box below for the viewers thanks so much for taking the time to come on the show nick i really do appreciate it all the best with nam and symbol moving forward and let's follow up in the near future no worries aston you have a you have a good one eh